Now we're looking at pseudocode. So this image I have here, let me zoom in. This is from the BBC Bite Size website. And this list has the typical things that people would use for pseudocode. Again, not fully exhaustive. And again, I do think some of this doesn't need to be there, but it's entirely up to you. The main ones that people actually focus on are input, output, uh, for and while. Some people just use loop for both of those and even for repeat until all these three could be just said as loops. And then we obviously have if then else. Some people also do process. I like to do process as well. This is something that's not shown in the input or output, but it's done in the background. For example, if you have to increment or add one to a value, that's something that's done in the background. You don't need to show the results straight away. So let me scroll down. This is the pseudocode I have. Again, not fully exhaustive, not perfect by any means. And I am 100% sure somebody will pick up that this probably isn't the best way to do things. But this is just how I could quickly get this out. This is just my interpretation again. Some of this stuff is repeated. For example, here I've got output, 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 output. I could have all of this on one single output line, but obviously that would look very, very messy. So I didn't do that. So let me zoom in and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I have is a while emergency button not pressed. We can say is not pressed. Again, pseudocode is very, very close to English readable language. And maybe I should actually explain what pseudocode is. My interpretation, my definition, again, might be slightly different from what you find on Google or what your teacher tells you. But pseudocode is essentially a textual description that's similar to code, similar to syntax, similar to logic, which explains or describes the problem you're trying to solve. So here we're trying to de um, do a magnetic sensor to detect if the, um, the mount body has a magnet installed and if it doesn't do one thing, if it does do another thing. Again, this is just a textual description that's not written in plain English, plain paragraph. Pseudocode has some logic written into it. So... This is why here I've said while emergency button is not pressed, because again, remember, the emergency button is the thing that actually stops the system straight away. Nothing else can happen. This is how you stop it, right? So while that button is not pressed, while the system is allowed to continue working, wait two seconds, right? And I say wait two seconds simply because some electronic devices, they do take a bit of time to come up. And as fast as the Raspberry Pi Pico is, it's just always a sensible idea to give it time to initialize, just to start up. Output, so onto the LCD, put welcome message to LCD, flash both LEDs, play buzzer sound so you might put a welcome message that says welcome to magnetic sensor system right flash both leds flash the green one flash the red one play a buzzer sound beep 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 done that's it again not entirely necessary but just for um, user interaction purposes quite good so the user that starts the system knows what's happening knows that okay a test is being done everything is working moving forward okay next we have input press button one to start the system after human checks have been completed. Now, typically in a factory, humans have to go around at some point and do checks just to make sure everything is clear of debris. There's, there, there are no machine parts that are tangled together. Wires are okay. If the surfaces are clean, typically there's a human um, input at some point and it's typically just to start it. So when the human presses one button to start, the system's good to go. Again, I say wait two seconds. This should allow the conveyor belt to move item in place. Now, we're not concerning ourselves with the conveyor belt moving in place. The main thing that we need to do is to mimic the system detection. We don't actually control the conveyor belt afterwards because they said that in the exam. So again, the only thing we need to do is to make sure that our system can detect the magnet or not and do appropriate actions if a magnet is detected and if a magnet is not detected, do a separate set of actions. So here I say process, position hall sensor close to mount body. So you, again, you're mimicking. So what you could do when your system is actually finished, you could just have a hall sensor on the table. You have a magnet and you're just pretending that there's a conveyor belt moving around. And every two, two or so seconds, you move a magnet closer to the hall sensor. And every two or so seconds, you move it away again. So it actually detects a hall sensor and does the appropriate action again. And I've got two conditions for the hall sensor, right? So the magnetic sensor. Um, if magnet is detected, do these set of things here. If magnet is not detected, do these set of things here. Feel free to pause, but I'm going to go through it anyway. So if the magnet is detected, process, increment good item count by one. So remember, we, we had a, system, um, a thing that says good item count, um, bad item count. 
increment or increase good item count value by one. Output, turn on a green LED, note, do, okay, so this is just a note I made to myself. All of these individual things that we're doing, for example, turn the green LED on and off, on and off, make the thing beep once, update the LCD, we can put all of these in a function. Now, I'm going to show you guys how to create functions and, and how to get returned values from functions later on. But just as a quick note, if anyone wanted to go ahead and start looking at the programming stuff from now, look at how you define a function in Python. Uh, let me just make note of it here again. I'm sorry, I'm going slightly off track, but I wanted to give as much information as possible. Define function, if I can spell. Define function in Python and get function return value. This is going to be quite important moving forward. And these are the two main things you need to do. Functions are very easy to define and use. Getting the return value is also very easy, but it's a good idea to learn how to do this, not just for Python, for C, for the PIC microcontroller, for whatever language you're using, this is always a good idea. Because a function, as I said here, makes your program or makes your code more reusable. It, every time I want to turn the green LED on and off, on and off, on and off, I don't need to go and copy four or five lines of code again. I could write that one, I'm sorry, that, that five lines of code once. And every time I want to use it, I can go and simply say, use green LED function, use green LED function. And it will just use that function and all the stuff that's inside of it. So let me just start again. So if magnet sensor is detected, process increment good item count by one. So if an item is good, I call it good item, right? Very descriptive. It could also be increase good item count by one. The output... This is something that goes out of the system again. Turn green LED on. So actually, this could be input. I could actually do input here. Not entirely necessary because I, I already said if magnet detected, but if you really wanted to, you could do input here. I'm going to leave that in for now, make it bold, but I won't do it on the next one. Output, turn green LED on. Output again, single beep of buzzer. Output, update LCD with current count. Output, move conveyor belt item to the good bin to be packed. So this is all stuff that the system is supposed to do if a magnet is detected. Again, very loose description of what needs to happen. Not very detailed at the moment, but we can make it more detailed when we're programming. We can always come back to pseudocode and add more detail. Next, we have if magnet is not detected. And again, I'm not going to put the input thing here because I already added it at the top. So process, increment bad item count by one. Output, turn red LED on. So again, the red LED indicates that something negative has happened. Output, double beep on buzzer. Before we had a single beep, meaning good beep, you can enter the system is okay, everything's fine. Typically a double beep, 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 means that there's something wrong. Now you can choose any beeps you want, any LED you want. This is just my interpretation of this system, how it should work. Output, uh, update LCD with current count. So again, after I've counted what the value is, I update the LCD with the count. Now, this count is not just for good or bad. Realize I didn't put good or bad here. Um, I should probably move that as well from, from the top one. This is just count. So good count. So good count and bad count. Everything gets updated because you want real live updates on the system. So when I say count, I meant good count and bad count. So if we have... 10 good items and three bad items it should say something it should look something along the lines of this let me just make some notes here again so we could say good count equals what did i say 20 let's say 20 right and then we have bad count equals three right this shouldn't be 16 characters i hope because again this is a 16 by 2 lcd so only 16 characters can go at the top 16 characters can go at the bottom as well so roughly something that looks like this and then after that, this is where I put my code in to say, if emergency button is pressed. Now, this can go anywhere. This can go before the first two if statements. That's fine. Ideally, that's where you want to put it. But it, for the purpose of pseudocode, it doesn't actually matter where it goes. Because again, the logic is what matters. The fact that it is actually there and, it's, and it can be implemented in a way that's understandable. If emergency button is pressed, stop the system, obviously. Output, update text file with date, time, and special meshes, message that says something along the lines of um, button has been pressed, emergency system paused at current date and current time. Here I have repeat until reset button pressed. So this is going to keep happening 
until someone actually comes, checks the system over, checks everything is okay, and presses the reset button to say, okay, yeah, everything is fine. The system can start again. I would put keep on red or keep red LED on. I would put buzzer beep once per second until system reset. So the LED is going to keep flashing. Uh, sorry, um, stay on. It's going to be a constant LED on, right? So that tells us there's an obvious issue there. And then the buzzer is going to beep once every second. So it's going to be beep, beep, beep with the LED on as well. And if the button is pressed, it should then return to main starting point. Ah, I made a mistake here. Perfect. So this is why it's a good idea to always go over stuff. I left out a check because I've said here, if emergency button is pressed, do all of this. But I didn't say what should happen if the reset button is pressed. So I can simply do an if statement here or an if here. So I'm going to just do that, move that in a bit more. And I can say if reset button is pressed. I'm making this larger just so it stands out for now. If reset button is pressed, return to main starting point. And all that means again is that it goes back to the top of the code where it was supposed to start. And then the final if statement we have is if end of day time is reached. So let's say your system is supposed to work from 9 a.m. to 5.05 p.m., right? When it comes to 5.05 p.m., the system, the end of day time has been reached. So what should happen? Output update LC, LCD end of day operation just that's just printed on the LCD which is fine end of day operation might go across two lines so it could be end of day on the first um on the first line and then operation on the second line but it, again it really doesn't matter right output alternate LED flash between green and red sound buzzer every two seconds so green LED goes on red LED goes on afterwards green then red green then red and it keeps flashing on and off on and off on and off we also sound a buzzer once every two seconds. We do this for about, again, you can specify your time, 30 seconds, just to let people know, okay, the systems are shutting down. It's a very obvious thing. Output, update text file, with date and time, and end of day values, G count and B count. I think that's supposed to be good count and bad count, but it probably just was gonna go over. So I'd say G count. Good count meaning at the end of the day, let me make some notes here again. So yes, your text file might look something like this. So end of day um, the date and time today is the 1st of November 2022 um, then we, we then I then I can say good count equals uh, let's do 5,000 right then we can say bad count c-o-u-n-t equals uh, 10 that's not too bad right good count this is going to be in your text file and this is going to be up um, updated at the end of every day, there's going to be a new line added, and this is going to be the most recent thing. So maybe I should put date as well. So that's the date, and the time could be, what's 5? 17, 0, 5, uh, 30, something like that, right? So this tells us end of day. So this is what gets sent to our text file. Again, this part is 100% overkill. This is not something that you need to do. The, the, the text file thing isn't a necessity, but the main functionality of the system needs to be described in the pseudocode. This is just, again, my interpretation or one interpretation that I quickly came up with in a few minutes of how the system should work. This part up here, this is from the BBC Bite Size website. So not only do they have a video on the website describing what pseudocode is and text describing what it is, it gives you this example of how people do the typical keywords for pseudocode, let's say. And I do believe they also give you an example of pseudocode. So I'm going to put the link in the description. You guys can have a, um, go ahead and have a look there as well. And I think it was also in my PowerPoint and previous videos. But just in case you didn't catch it there, this is what it looks like. This is my pseudocode example. Not perfect by a long shot, but it's a starting point. You should always review this. So even after you've done it and you think, okay, everything is 100% there. As you guys can see, when I was going through, I didn't have this if reset button is pressed. I had if the emergency button was pressed, but I didn't have until the reset button is pressed. And if the reset button is pressed, this is what happens. Well, I hope that was useful. Uh, any questions you guys have, let me know in the description. Let me know in the comments.